everybody perceives everybody else as socially similar, they're going to be annoyed when somebody says something that disagrees with what they think. And people are going to learn to expect this. And so people in a homogeneous group are less likely to say things that disagree with what they perceive to be the conventional wisdom in that group. Having people who are different, even in ways that have really no relationship to what the task is, can undermine that effect. So that somebody who's perceived to be different will, will be less likely to be sort of reacted to in a negative way. Again, just having some people who are different can actually make it a lot easier to get different ideas out. And there are studies that show that people will be more likely even to listen to an idea that's, that disagrees or to sort of a divergent viewpoint from a member of their own group if there's somebody from a different group present, even if that person doesn't say it. So the presence of diversity isn't necessarily linked to different people with different backgrounds, no different things. But it's the presence of people who look different from one another, who people will judge to be socially different, can cause them to interact differently with each other and to be more open to hearing different ideas than they would be otherwise. Let me just begin with the first question about what diversity is by telling a little story. Um, this is a, something that happened to me when I take my kids to Chinese school. My wife is originally from China and our kids go to Chinese school on Saturdays. One Saturday in 2016 when I brought my kids there, there was a Vaisakhi festival going on at the same time which created lots of traffic jams and stuff, but lots of noise, excitement, music, people in bright colored clothing. And my daughter who was I think, four years old at the time really wanted to go see what this was all about. So I let her go and play hooky. Uh, for about a half an hour from Chinese school. And one of the things that I came away from this thing, wow, that was a really diverse event. And in fact, at the event, there, was, there were people talking about diversity and how important this was. And what brought with yeah, a really diverse event. And then, then when I thought about it some more, I thought, well, there's ways in which it's not diverse. Because almost everybody there was of the same religion. So that's a way in which it's not diverse. On the other hand, that religion is one that's a minority in Canada, and one that's there's a history of discrimination against Sikhs, for example, in BC. So, so there's a sense in which it's diverse, a sense in which it's not diverse, and that sort of raised, got me thinking about what led to this project, which was that people use the word diverse in a bunch of different ways, and they're often really not realizing it through, that they're using it in different ways. And not only does it get used in different ways, but there's different reasons why you want to talk about diversity one way rather than another way. So there's different reasons why it might be better for science to be diverse, better for the knowledge just strictly in terms of knowledge to be diverse. But then there's also different ethical and moral reasons why diversity might matter. And that these things, these different reasons are tied to different concepts, different ways to think about diversity. And so that's really what got this project going. And I think it's important. It's, I think it's important for obvious reasons. I mean, Canada, other liberal democratic countries, diversity is always an issue you know, in, many, in many different ways. And so it's something, that, to a certain extent, we just have to live with, even if you if happen not to like it. But there's also, in a sense, something you can take advantage of and you can benefit from. And to me, of course, that's the most sensible way to think about it, is how to make the best advantage of diversity that exists. So, I mean, it's, in many ways, diversity is important in science for the same reason that it's important in lots of other places in society, in business or government, in many other places. Um, so, I mean, it's important because if you have too many people, of a, too great a proportion of people who are similar in their social identities, this can create problems for just for knowledge. Um, it also is important because scientific projects are often motivated by people's ideals about what society, what the world should be like, and if science is really different than the population in general in terms of these things that can be can potentially be problematic. So, so it's important for science in the same ways as I think important to a lot of other areas of life. Um, but science especially it matters with respect to knowledge because obviously that's what science is after. And in philosophy of science there's a number of people uh, who have really explored the idea that making science more diverse isn't just good for justice and equity, but it actually makes for better science in terms of better scientific knowledge. It will make science more objective, um, various things. And so one of the aims of this project was to assess those ideas or explore those ideas more rigorously because 
like much of the popular discussion, A, those, those philosophical accounts of diversity in science do not typically distinguish between different ways of thinking about diversity. Moreover, they tend to overlook some of the key explanations about diversity, some really important ideas about how diversity might affect how well a group performs. There's something called the double-edged sword that goes like this, and this is how most people think about it. They think, on the one hand, diversity could be a challenge because people have different ideas, they have different backgrounds, they just think about things in different ways, maybe you know, there's like different ethnic backgrounds, different religious backgrounds, and that might create some kind of social conflict, along with just having difficulties to communicate because of different education. So diversity can create problems for how well the group coheres with, within itself, and that can make the group not perform so well. On the other hand, if people are diverse, then that suggests they'll have different knowledge, they might have different skills, they might have different values that cause them to focus on the different aspect of the problem. And that can actually be really good because you don't just have a group full of people who all think about the problem in the same way and have all the same information. Well, you got people who have different ways of thinking about it and different information. Okay. So the usual way to think about diversity is that picture. It's this sort of positive edge and the negative edge and which one will be the strongest is sort of the decider for how diversity overall affects it. What that picture leaves out is the fact, is the possibility that diversity can affect how well people get along with each other, both positively and negatively. So the, the typical picture just focuses on the potential for a negative effect on how well people work together. So there's a number of explanations out there that focus on the idea that, for example, how people respond to information depends a lot on who's presenting information. So people want other people who are they perceive to be like them to say things that agree with what they say. People like to have other people agree with them in general, but especially if it's somebody who's like you. Just to give a, a, give a sort of blunt example, imagine you're a, you're a university professor. You probably would be more annoyed by one of your colleagues being a big fan of Donald Trump than a tobacco farmer in Kentucky being a big fan of Donald Trump. Why? Well, you think that person in your down the hall from you two doors should have similar kinds of views as you about these matters. Okay? And you might really get annoyed if they don't. And someone comes far away and you think totally different than you, well, they have different ideas, who cares? So that can make a difference for how well a group does at getting information out that people actually have. I think the cluster raises some really interesting, interesting theoretical questions in, in the sense that diversity as it arises in the cluster is really different than it usually is studied. Usually the idea is you have a task that's fixed and then there's diversity or not and you sort of compare different diverse groups to non-diverse groups, see how they do. Here, the diversity is involved in deciding what the task will be and what will count as success in the task, which is really different than how it's normally studied, but in some ways I think is more indicative of actually how it works in real life in certain ways. And, and I think so it raises a number of interesting issues that are just different from what have normally been described. And so, so I think that's a real opportunity um, in both in, you know, in, the, in the way of doing something useful um, for this, this project and this you know, the indigenous science project and also in terms of research more generally.